Is there such a thing as a soulmate? Well, no, not really. I, I know that really goes against our thinking today. We have such an over-romanticized concept of marriage that there's that special, super perfect person out there. And if I can just find that super perfect person, I'll be happy. And everybody's running around trying to find you know, that, that one person. And, and you, you see it in all the movies, particularly the chick flicks, the romantic flicks. Uh, it makes for a great movie watching two people try and find each other. But the truth is, it's, it's, it's not based in reality. There is no special one person uh, that's going to make you happy. Um, and the church doesn't really help out much better either because we come along and then we spiritualize the same nonsense by saying, God created a special person just for you. You need to find just that right person that God created for you. I mean, how insane is that? First of all, the Bible never says anything like that. And secondly, is this not the epitome of selfishness? Think what we're saying. God in heaven created another human being just to make you happy. I mean, if that is not the epitome of selfishness, I don't know what is. God didn't make someone else just for you. That's ludicrous. What is the key to a successful relationship? It's not about finding the right person. A successful relationship is based on two people doing the right things. And if you'll do the right things, you'll succeed. It's that simple. If you don't, you'll fail. And that's just equally as simple. The reason why people are struggling so hard today is not because they haven't found the right person. It's because they're doing all the wrong things. So I think the whole emphasis of trying to find that special cosmic person is a big mistake. That's not to say that single people shouldn't be thoughtful in the process. You want to find a good person. I mean, don't marry an idiot. People do that all the time, particularly women who think, well, I can change him. You know, don't think like that. If it acts like a skunk, it walks like a skunk, and it smells like a skunk, it's a skunk, move on. You know, don't marry obvious people that are nothing but problems in your life. So be as thoughtful as you can, but don't, don't get caught up in this idea of it has to be that one special person today. It's just not good thinking. It's certainly not uh, biblically sound, and it doesn't even make common sense. Uh, find a good person. If you'll do the right things, virtually any two people in the world can succeed. That's the power of of principles like love and patience and long suffering, which means to suffer a long time, of forgiveness, all that stuff. Those principles are so powerful that they'll work in virtually any relationship if people will implement them. But they, they're not doing it today. They're, they're ignoring these principles, hoping that it should just be automatic and easy if I find the right person. So they're out there chasing trying to find the right person, thinking that, you know, I've finally found the right one, and then they get married, and then they're miserable. Then they'll come to someone like me and say, Pastor, I made a mistake. I said, no, you're, you're making a mistake if you're thinking that way. It's not, it's not about that. The reason people are expecting marriage to be easy is because of this ridiculous thinking of a soulmate. The, the concept is, if you'll find the right person, then it's easy then they'll automatically know what you need in life and, and you'll be on the same cosmic wavelength meeting each other's needs, which is just ridiculous. Uh, if you want someone to meet your needs, you need to communicate those needs to someone. Don't sit around thinking, gee, if he really loved me, I wouldn't have to tell him. Of course you have to tell him. Nobody can tell. Nobody's walking around with ESP in their brains, particularly men, uh, unless you happen to be married to a really, really sensitive person, they're not going to know. And there's even people who are real sensitive who still miss stuff. I mean, you know, marriage is hard. It's always been hard. And the Bible is clear about it. It's not like the Bible's holding out on us. In my seminar, I read those two verses of the scripture where it says, it's good for a man not to get married. <laughs> and then he goes on and says, because those who marry will have trouble in this life. That's the Bible's take on it. No, no one said that it was going to be easy. In fact, it's very clear. It's hard. It can be difficult. Now, the alternative is what? Being single all your life? I, you know, it's not like that's a picnic. The truth is, life is hard, period. All of life is hard. Uh, people today who uh, are trying to expect life to be easy 
don't get it and they struggle in life. Not only do they expect their marriages to be easy, they expect raising their kids to be easy. Here's a crazy concept. They think their jobs should be easy, that all their relationships with everyone in their life should be easy. Going to church should be easy. Everyone should always be nice to them, 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 them. You know, it's all based on uh, some form of selfishness at some level. Uh, life is not easy. It was, it's never been easy. Uh, but if you want to succeed, it's worth the work. If you want to get paid, you have to do the work. If you'll do the work, you'll get paid. You can't just walk into a company uh, at random up to the payroll office and say, I'd, I'd like a check. Well, well, no, you didn't do anything. Yeah, but that's not love. I'm going to a Christian company. I mean, how crazy is this? This is the way people live. They expect payoff in life pay off in their relationships, pay off with their kids, pay off with their families, pay off with their churches, but they don't want to really do anything. If you find the right church, the right people, all that should come naturally. It's nonsense. Yeah, if, if you go into marriage thinking that marriage is a 50-50 proposition, you'll fail. You'll absolutely fail. Marriage is a 100%, 100% proposition. If you go in trying to think, well, I'm going to give half and wait for the other person to give half back, and you know, who, who sets that measurement? Where, where do you draw the line? How do you determine when something's half? And what are you going to do? You, you hit a certain point and then you start holding back on your affection? Start holding back on your, your money? Start holding back on your time? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, honey, you know, I've, I've given you, you know, whatever allotment I have for the day and then move on. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Uh, no such thing as a 50-50 deal. It's 100% both ways. <laughs> do I really have to talk to my spouse about things that do not interest me? Yes, of course you do. That's just common courtesy. If someone starts uh, talking to you in any discussion, anywhere, you don't suddenly just go, ah, not interested and walk away, that would be rude. That would be insulting. I mean, why couples do that to each other is horrifying. I mean, just show common courtesy. If your spouse is talking to you about something you don't really care about, at a minimum, just be polite and, and respond. And, you know, now if, if at some point it becomes so horrifying, then I suppose you can say something. I'll, I'll do that to my wife. I mean, she frequently will discuss things with me that I could not possibly care less about. You know, something she saw at the store or this or that. Who cares? But saying, gee, who cares, is a formula for disaster. I try and be nice and I try and be polite. And if it's something that continues on and on and on, I'll at some point just say, you know, please. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm not interested in what you're talking about. And then she'll slug me or something. And then we can still laugh about it and move on. But yeah, just show common courtesy. Why is communicating so hard now that we're married when before we got married, there were no communication problems? Well, because when you were dating, that wasn't real life. I mean, dating is the biggest bogus part of life. I mean, everybody's telling everybody what they want to hear and everybody's living in this false drug-induced state of romance. Uh, it's not real life. You don't really discover life until you put on the ring and you really commit to each other and you start living life together. That's when the real challenges come in. And everybody has these challenges. And because you're so close to each other, uh, it can get difficult at times. But, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong. Uh, a lot of relationships are like that, even with your children. I mean, there's guys, there's people who have children who are just very problematic, uh, very, you know, troublesome and, and don't want to behave, but then take those same kids and put them with someone else, send them over to the neighbors or to an uncle or something, and suddenly they're the most well-behaved kids in the world, and you think, What's the deal? How come you don't behave, behave that way with me? Well, because they're not with you, them all the time. When you're with somebody all the time, it just gets harder. 
There's, you know, everything's so connected to everything, and at some point, uh, it, it gets to be a struggle. But that's normal. Sometimes the reason people don't talk is because when they do, they don't feel safe, they feel ridiculed, or they feel challenged, or they feel put down at some level, and uh, they, they learn the safest thing for me to do is not to say anything. So um, if you have a spouse who never wants to talk, uh, you need to make sure that when, when you do talk with them, that it's safe when they talk. You know, that you're not saying stuff, well, well, that's stupid. Or, what do you think like that for? Or, well, that's wrong. I mean, you talk that way to me, I'm fine. You know, my Puerto Rican blood loves an argument. You know, I love debating stuff and fights. But a lot of people aren't wired that way. The minute you start challenging them and their ideas and their feelings at any level, they begin to shut down. They don't feel safe. Uh, you know, we, we do that whole flag page program with couples. You get someone with a very high peace score in their life. They, they can be very, uh, very quiet people, uh, not because they don't care, not because they're not concerned. Uh, they don't feel safe and respected to share their opinions often. And, and you put them in an, uh, an environment like that, and they're very quiet. I don't know if you've ever seen someone who's real quiet in some situations, but then just talks like crazy in others. Why? Because in the second situation, they feel very safe to be themselves. And they talk, la, 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 they never shut up. Then you put them in, with, in a different environment, suddenly they're very quiet, very reserved. Again, they're not being mean. They're not trying to rob anybody of, of their emotions. It's usually they don't feel safe. So, the question I get is, well, wait a minute, I tried that. I asked more than once, and I asked the right way, and, la, la, and he still wouldn't do it. Look, this is not rocket science. This is not a guaranteed uh, formula for success every time. Uh, this is a pattern of how you deal with a man. Don't try it out once to see if it works or not, because then you'll just give up. Uh, there might be times where you will ask the right way, ask uh, bartering, ask more than once, and he still won't do it. If he still doesn't do it, well, for the love of God, just move on. You know, if he won't fix the toilet and you've asked half a dozen times and you asked the right way, and just call a plumber. Why destroy your marriage? Because you can't get him to do something. Well, because I think he should. Well, there's a lot of things in life that should, but they just don't always. So don't get freaked out and discouraged that even with my formulas, they're not absolutely foolproof. They're not all foolproof. I never said that they were. These are basic concepts and ideas and how to deal with men. Given your best effort, sometimes you either just need to go do it yourself or call somebody else. <laughs> how can I get my husband to be like everybody else's husbands that are so nice and kind and considerate? First of all, you don't know what's going on in that other house. And you don't know what those husbands are really like. Uh, I have come to experience that some of the uh, worst marriages are some of the ones that look the prettiest on the outside. Why? Because they're just as plastic as they can be. Don't judge and compare your relationship to other people's relationships. First of all, they're not you. They'll never be you. They don't even want to be you. So, you know, don't do that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't compare yourself to anybody, quite frankly. Um, and, you know, the Bible tells us not to do that. I know women struggle with that a lot. They're constantly comparing themselves to how other women look and how other women's children behave and how other women, nah, 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 nah. That's why some of them have such low self-esteem. Uh, you don't generally see guys doing that. You know, I don't see some really big, good-looking guy going by and think to myself, why can't I look like that? <laughs> we don't think anything of it. So what? Who cares? Uh, we don't have that problem. But don't get into comparing yourself, your children, your relationship with your husband to other people's relationships. It's, all you're going to do is uh, get frustrated if you do that.